What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Epic Gardening. Now, what if I told you there was a plant that when you touched it, it responded, it fell apart, it, it collapsed, it, it changed shape, almost as if it was an animal or if it was alive in a way that plants don't normally seem to be alive. Well, that is true. There is such a plant and it is called the tickle me plant. In today's video, we're actually not going to be just showing you how it works. We're actually gonna be growing one from the ground up. We're growing a tickle me plant from seed. And so this is a full grow guide. So this is gonna be pretty epic. It's gonna be pretty cool. And I am very, very excited. So let's go ahead and get into it. So while you can get this plant at a lot of different nurseries, I actually was sent out, look at this, cute little Christmas box so tickled to share this gift with you from the Tickle Me Plant guys. So the links will be in the description for that, but let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on inside. Now, despite how tricky and interesting the plant sounds, it's actually fairly easy to grow. So it looks like we've got a little confetti in here. Thank you guys, very cool, very cool. And we have our little container. We've got, oh, there we go. Hello, my name is Mark Chipkin, the co-owner of the Tickle Me Plant Company. So then we have a peat Looks like wonder soil. I'm guessing this is, yeah, it looks like it's expandable coconut fibers, worm castings, organic fertilizers. So I'm gonna, normally I would use my own potting mix. I will use this because it came with the kit. We have our little pot, we have our seeds here, and then we have our care and helpful growing tips. Let's take a look at the shape structure of the seeds. So these are actually pretty big looking seeds to me. Uh, not like a basil or anything like that. It's gonna be relatively easy to sow these and that will be our next step. So for the purposes of this experiment, we're going to be using the coconut coir plug given to us. So this is just compressed coconut coir, usually expands to at least three, four X its weight and size. So we're just gonna add that in. Actually, this one's decomposing relatively quickly. Sometimes coconut coir can take some time to decompose. Uh, sorry, not decompose, to rehydrate, that's the better word, although it does look like it's kind of falling apart. And there we go. So now it's time to transfer this into our four inch growing pot. So I've decided to put a little bit of the paper at the bottom just because this reconstituted and it's not quite as solid as I would hope, so I think a lot of it's gonna drain out, which is why I put a little bit at the bottom just to catch and absorb a little bit of the water so I don't just pour it straight through the drainage holes. And I was correct, there's a good amount draining out, but that's okay. Looks like the paper little confetti at the bottom did a good job there. We have an okay amount of soil here. I wanna make sure that I get all of it, so I'm gonna spatula the rest right out here. Boom. Let's go ahead and flatten it out, and we'll go ahead and soak and prepare our seeds. So tickle me plant seeds, when we're starting them, I have them in a small wine glass here. I have five seeds in this little glass. And what they want is they wanna be started by soaking. So 24 to 48 hours, but on top of that, you wanna get the water slightly below boiling, pour it into this glass, and then let it sit for 24 to 48 hours. So that noise in the background you're hearing, that is my electric water kettle, and I've got it heating up right now to 185. And so that is, of course, below the boiling point. We don't wanna scald completely. Our, our seeds, but we do want to get it nice and hot and then let it cool down and then we're going to transplant and when we transplant We're putting it about an eighth of an inch below the surface of the soil or basically just sprinkling a little bit of extra soil on top and Barely covering them. Let's go ahead and do it. Our water has been boiled. Let's go ahead and pour it in Making our tickle me tea right here. I'm just gonna pour in a nice healthy amount More you pour in the longer it's gonna take for this initial heat to dissipate and I think that part of the reason why we're doing this of course is the heat does have an effect on starting the seeds so pouring in a little bit more might be beneficial you can see our seeds floating down here at the bottom like I said I have five they recommend planting mo no more than three per pot but I wanted to start a couple extra just in case uh, I have a whole video on why you might want to do that but now we're gonna wait 24 48 hours I'll see you guys in a couple days all right everyone we're back it's been exactly 48 hours actually and let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on with our seeds, get them started, and move on to the next part of the process. The first thing I'm gonna do is get some of this excess water out without dumping our seeds into the water. So I'm just gonna be careful here. Looks like, just from preliminary looking, 
Four of them have germinated and one of them has not, which is why you always start extra seeds. Pro tip, an epic tip if you will. Let's take a look at what we got going on. So right there you can see our cluster of four seeds. The white sections are the roots that are starting to come out. So let's go ahead and get these guys out. Slowly and gently. There we go. And I'll get them on the soil before we spread them out. Direction said I should be planting about three per pot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant four in like a north, south, east, west little array. We'll just do that. And then they said more or less to surface so, so about an eighth of an inch, which whenever something is that shallow, what I like to do is I just take a little bit of extra soil and just barely cover and tamp it over just a little bit. Because an eighth of an inch, you don't need to be absolutely precise about that. What they're basically just saying is tamp it over. I'm going to make sure the roots are pointing downwards just so we give them a bit of a head start there. Tamp it over, make sure that it, it doesn't get 100% exposed to light, but it does get at least a little bit. So if you go too deep, it's not gonna have the best time. So that's about it, and we're just gonna wait. So that's it, it's just surface zone, almost eighth of an inch, we're good to go. I've put, as you can see, a little wine glass humidity dome on top to make sure that it doesn't dry out, make sure that those young, tender roots actually get a chance to get down into our soil mix and start establishing themselves. So you can see I've got some propagation stuff going on up here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna check back in a week, then we're gonna check back in two weeks, after a week, we should start to see those seed leaves established, right? So those seed leaves are gonna be there. You cannot tickle those because they don't respond the same way as an established true leaf does. So we're gonna wait until the two week mark to get to the true leaves, which are also the leaves that you can tickle. And then once it establishes itself, we're gonna make sure, test out all the cool different things you can do. You can touch the stem and only the stem will drop. The leaves will remain extended. You can touch one leaf and it'll cascade down. You can touch all leaves and they'll all close up. There's a lot of cool things we can do. So stay tuned guys, fast forward one week. There we go. It's been a couple days. Let's see how this is going. Looks like we've got three of them sprouting really nicely and one of them still alive, but it looks like the root system didn't quite make it into the soil. So let's see if I can repot that one. But these are looking really, really solid. What you can see here is the seed leaves or the cotyledons right there and right there. You can see the very small start right in the center of the true leaves, the first set of true leaves, which would be the first tickleable leaves. So all three of these developing pretty nicely. I'm gonna make sure and get this back under the sun so it can grow really quickly and we'll follow up in probably a week or so. All right, it's been about 10 days. Let's see how we're looking. Check it out, guys. We actually do have some true leaves, and you can see the, the difference in these leaves is quite significant. You have these cotyledons right here, and then you have the true leaves, which I'm not gonna touch right now. I'm still gonna wait for the final revere. We're gonna let these grow up a little bit. Now, the one that I re repotted or re-rooted down in the soil is definitely a little slower to take. This one is the most vigorous as far as its growth right here. And then this one's doing well. This one's coming out as well. So looking pretty good. I'd really like to get to maybe three different individual sets of, of true leaves before we start doing some of our experiments on the touching. So stay tuned. It'll probably be another week or two before we come back. Here we are on day 14-ish or so. We are looking at some pretty good growth. It looks like all of them except for this guy, which I'm more or less giving up on. I don't really care if he survives or not. I already have three plants here. It looks like all of them have their first set of true leaves fully grown out, and it looks like the second one's coming in. So you can see right here, I'm not gonna touch it, this second one is coming in on this one, and the second one is sort of threading through the first set right there, and then also, oh crap, I touched it. Well, at least you get to, <laughs> at least you get to see what it looks like. I was trying to save that for when it was a little more established, guys. It's okay. You can see what happened on that is that the leaves contracted and the stem fell down, which are the two movements that this plant will make. So we're going to come back in a little bit and we'll do a more extended touching test. All right, guys, we are here. The moment is here. We have three Mimosa pudica plants that are pretty well established. I'm comfortable running the experiments on them. So there's a couple different areas in which the plant is sensitive to touch. I'm not going to touch it just yet, but you have the individual leaflets and then you have this stem itself. And so on this little card that I got with the, the plant, it has a couple different experiments we can potentially try out. And so one of those is to see if you can just make the leaves close one at a time. So I'm gonna come in and just gently touch the very tip of this one right here and see what happens. 
That didn't trigger it. It's not triggering. It's not triggering. Let's try this one. Nothing. Interesting. Let's try a more mature leaf right here. There you go. One leaflet closed. Two leaflets closed. And there should be the third right there. Looks like, look at that, I only had one of those closed. It looks like you kind of have to give it a decent touch for it to actually close. And if you were more aggressive with it, you could actually make the entire thing close up whoop, completely. Now the next experiment is to see if you can make a stem drop without the leaves actually moving. So I'm gonna come behind here and see if I can just touch this stem. Looks like this, this one is just not sensitive to touch and I don't know why that would be. But let's try doing it to this one right here. Just the stem. Stem is not responding. Well, it worked on this mature one here, so I'm gonna try coming in with this here and hitting this mature one right here on the stem if I can. Huh, that's not working either, interesting. Let's try touching this. Looks like I gotta be a little more rough with it than I thought. And that's probably so it doesn't just immediately close no matter what, like if, if the wind is ruffling or whatever. Let's try this one here. That works. So you gotta be, you do have to be somewhat rough with it. Let's see if I'm a little more rough with this one. Well, that, there you go, there you go. You do have to hit it decently. So I'm gonna hit that. Let's try this one here. Boom. Maybe if I like kind of paint it. There you go, look at that. That makes it work. Interesting, interesting. We're also outdoors in the wind, so maybe that has something to do with it. Let's try this one right here. So I'm gonna try, look, I'm gonna try touching it very gently. Nothing really happening there. Now I'm gonna try paint brushing it with my fingertip. Uh, it's starting to go, it's starting to go. There you go, there's one. Let's try this one. Oh, that was, oh look, there you go. You got the stem to drop a little bit. I'm gonna touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it. I'm gonna kind of spam it. I'm spamming it, spamming it, spamming it. Doot, doot, doot. I'm gonna be very aggressive now. Oh, there you go, look at this one. The stem's dropping if you touch. I'm trying to figure out where I need to touch to make the stem drop. Let's make this one close all the way. I don't know if the camera caught it, but this stem did drop about a few millimeters. And it looks like this one's drop. Oh, this one's dropping as well. There you go. Look at that. It's closing up. So this definitely stresses the plant out. So after this is done, I'm going to calm down and give it a little breathing room and I'll probably allow it to grow into more established plants. But that's pretty cool, guys. I mean, you can let this grow for quite a while and you'll have an almost endless amount of leaves that you can do this experiment with. So I got a tip from a reader to test applying heat to the leaf and see what happens. Not burning it, but putting it next to the flame. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna take this one right here and we're just gonna move it over this flame right here and see how it responds. It should curl. There you go, look at that. Incredible. Well, there we have it everyone. We have put our Tickle Me plants through the ringer, it's resting right now after we burned it with fire or put fire right next to it. But super cool plant, very fun for like science experiments or like if you have a child and you wanna show them a little bit about nature in a very fun, visceral way. But honestly, even though it is a weed in most areas of the world, it's a pan-tropical weed, which means it spans across the tropics uh, and it's relatively invasive. Um, it's fun to grow in a container. It's certainly something that I'm gonna be growing a little bit more of. I'm gonna try to see how big and bushy I can get my Mimosa Pudica. The flowers also look really cool. So, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any other interesting plants you'd like me to grow from seed, let me know in the comments because it's something I don't do too, too often, at least from the ornamental perspective. I do a lot of edibles from seed, but this is a different thing. So if you have anything like that, let me know in the comments. Till next time, good luck in the garden, keep on growing, and I'll see you on the next video.